is a sound check, testing one, two, three. This is a sound check, testing one, two, three. I can hear you, sound check, testing one, two, three. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, I will I will now call the public hearing of December 7th, 2021 to order. This meeting is convened by electronic means as such council members may participate in person or by electronic means. For council members participating by electronic means, please ensure your video is turned on and let the clerk know if you are leaving the meeting for purposes of confirming quorum. Uh, council members are required, uh, or sorry, council members are reminded that in accordance with section 1413 of the procedure bylaw, members must enable their video to confirm quorum. If council members attending by electronic means lose connection during any portion of the hearing, we will recess the meeting until the connection is restored. If council members lose connection during the voting process, staff will get you back online quickly while we suspend the voting process. The contact information has been circulated to you. Members of the public can view the proceedings via live stream and YouTube link, which will be tweeted out at Van City Clerk. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people. We thank them for having cared for this land and look forward to working with them, them in partnership as we continue to build this great city together. I also want to take a moment to recognize the immense contributions of the City of Vancouver staff who work hard every day to help make our city an incredible place to live, work, and play. And I'll note that Mayor Stewart has a leave of absence this evening. And as such, I, as Deputy Mayor, will be chairing the meeting. Uh, city Clerk, may we have the roll call, please? Mayor Stewart has a leave of absence. Councillor Carr? Yeah. Councillor DiGenova is in chair. Councillor Fry? Councillor Swanson? Maybe on mute. Councillor Swanson is not on the line yet. Councillor Hardwick? Councillor Hardwick is not on the line yet. Councillor Weeb? Present. Councillor Boyle? Present. Councillor Dominato? Councillor Bly? Present. And Councillor Kirby Young? Give quorum, Deputy Mayor DiGenova. Thank you. Before we begin, I have some announcements. The public may participate by speaking in person, by phone, or by submitting written comments to council. Speakers will have five minutes to make their comments and should limit their comments to the merits of the report being considered. Speakers should also state whether they are in support or opposed to the recommendations and if they are a resident of Vancouver. Speakers may only speak once and should follow along on Twitter at Van City Clerk for updates on the progress of the meeting so they don't miss their turn to speak. Any comments on agenda items can be submitted in writing through our online web form at vancouver.ca forward slash public dash or public dash hearing dash comments. This link will also be tweeted out. Those speaking on behalf of other persons or groups will have eight minutes to speak only if those represented are also present on the phone or in person and must not be speakers themselves. Speakers who pre-registered with presentations are reminded that the public live fleet feed has a slight delay. To navigate through the slides of your presentation, please say next so the clerk may advance your slides. I also want to note the City of Vancouver's long-standing commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion, including the utmost respect for all genders. I remind Council that when addressing speakers and staff, we will avoid using gendered honorifics and will instead refer to the person by first name, last name, role, or title. A reminder that Council's role at a public hearing is to be a quasi-judicial body, which means Council is only to consider the merits of the rezoning application or heritage designation. Council members may ask clarifying questions from speakers, including the applicant, or technical advice from staff, but should save debate for after the close of the speaker's list. After hearing from speakers, council may, one, approve the application in principle, two, refuse the application, or three, refer the application to staff for further consideration. Finally, if council does not conclude hearing from all speakers this evening, we will recess and reconvene this meeting on Wednesday, December 15th, 2021 at 6 p.m. For the fight, the, our, we're on to our first item, miscellaneous amendments concerning various CD1 bylaws. Does any member of council wish to declare a conflict of interest on item one? Seeing none, uh, the clerk will now read the application and summary of correspondence received. 
This is an application by the General Manager of Planning, Urban Design and Sustainability to make miscellaneous amendments to the Zoning and Development Bylaw to improve clarity, update references, correct inadvertent errors or omissions, and improve the administration of, of the bylaws. No correspondence has been received on this application since referral to public hearing. Thank you. Any speakers for this item who wish to speak to Council, please call toll free 1-833-353-8610 followed by participant code 94189 and then pound before the close of the speaker's list. The phone number will also be tweeted out and made available on the live stream. There will be an opportunity for those on the phone or in person to speak at the end of the registered speakers list. We have Nick Danford, Rezoning Planner, Rezoning Center, Planning, Urban Design and Sustainability here to present the application. Oh. Okay, um, we, we'll just, we're just gonna pause for a moment while we, while we wait to make sure that all of the mics for the presentation are working so that um, we can make sure that the public has access to this presentation as well. But for purposes of oops, oops. Um, yes, point of procedure. Okay, I'd need a seconder for that. Okay, and uh, I'm just gonna call for a verbal, verbal vote first. If there is um, any a single vote in opposition, we'll move to a recorded vote. All in favor, please say yay. Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, but we, Council uh, appreciates the presentation, uh, but has, has decided not to hear it tonight. And now I'm just gonna check with the clerk to make sure that we don't have any speakers, Council. Just one moment. Are there any questions from council to staff, first of all? Seeing no one on the queue, we will now hear from the public. And I don't see anyone on the speakers list at the moment. Um, I'll just ask the clerk. Do we have anyone on the speakers list? No speakers on the line. No speakers on the line. Okay, so uh, council, I'm gonna do a first call. Um, if there are any speakers to this, please call toll free 1-833-353-8610 followed by participant code 94189 before the close of the speakers list. Um, and as we've mentioned, the phone number has been tweeted out. If there's any additional speakers, even if you're not registered to speak. No if there's any speakers in chambers or outside, please come forward to the podium. No speakers, Chair. Thank you. And seeing no additional speakers, um, we will have a five minute recess to allow people to call in as we traditionally do. So we will come back at 6.43. Please, Council, come back at 5.6.43 to ensure we have quorum. Thanks.
Terry, can you hear us? Said yes. Thank you. Terry, go ahead. Now you're on mute. Testing one, two, three. Thank you. Testing one, two, three. Okay. Hi, Mike. All right, um, we're back. Uh, clerk, do we have any speakers who have called in to speak? On no speakers, Chair. Okay, seeing as there are no additional speakers, the speakers list is now closed. Um, do we have a motion? 
or sorry, okay. do we have questions to staff? No questions and seeing none, move the recommendations. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Kirby Young. Councillor Carr seconds. And is there any debate? Seeing none, I will call a vote, Council. Swanson here, could I have a vote assist in favor? Councillor Bly also needs a vote assist in favor. Councillor Reed needs a vote assist in favor. Me three. Okay, and and that passes with none in opposition. Okay, Council, we are now on to um, item number two on the agenda, CDI, or sorry, CD1 rezoning um, 534 to 550 Camby Street. Does any member of Council wish to declare a conflict of interest on item number two? Seeing none, uh, the clerk will now read the application and summary of correspondence received. This is an application by MCMP Architects to rezone 534 to 550 Canby Street from Downtown District to CD1 Comprehensive Development District to permit the development of a 22-story commercial office building with a height of 92.9 meters and a floor space ratio of 17.35 are proposed. The application also seeks to add the Cleveland Kent Building at 35. Five, sorry, 534 Canby Street to a C-listed heritage building to the Vancouver Heritage Register. The General Manager of Planning, Urban Design and Sustainability recommends approval subject to conditions set out in the summary and recommendation. The following correspondence has been received since referral to public hearing. Nine pieces of correspondence in support, six piece of, pieces of correspondence in opposition, and one piece of correspondence dealing with other aspects of the application. This represents all correspondence re received up to 5 p.m. today. Thank you. Any speakers for this item who wish to speak to Council, please call toll-free 1-833-353-8610, followed by participant code 941-89-POUND before the close of the speakers list. The phone number will be tweeted out and made available on the live stream. There will be an opportunity for those on the phone or in person to speak at the end of the registered speakers list. Um, we now have, or Council, we have Nick Danford, Rezoning Planner, Rezoning Center, Planning, Urban Design and Sustainability, here to present the application. Um, please go ahead. Great. Thanks, Councillor DeGenova. Uh, good evening, Council. I'm Nick Danford, Rezoning Planner. So on the agenda, we have a proposal for a 22-story commercial office building that includes partial heritage retention at 534 or 550 Canby Street. The site's located on the east side of Canby Street, mid-block between Pender and Dunsmuir. Uh, this is right on the east edge of downtown, close to Gastown. The site's currently zoned DD, or Downtown District, and is surrounded by similarly zoned uh, properties. The Downtown District zone in this area generally allows for conditional building heights up to 450 feet, with a maximum density of 7 FSR. Surrounding developments range from 4 to 12 stories. The site is bounded by lanes on three sides and is occupied by three two-story commercial buildings. One of the buildings, the Clellan Kent Building, located at 534 Canby, uh, has been evaluated as a Category C building and is eligible for the Heritage Register. The site's located in the Victory Square area of downtown, right across the, uh, Canby Street from BCC's downtown campus. Victory Square Park is located just to the north at the end of the block. Chinatown Skytrain Station is a block away, and two other transit stations are within a 10-minute walk. There are also a few childcare facilities located in the area. So the project's being considered under the enabling rezoning policy for the CBD and CBD shoulder. The area of uh, policy in which this site is located is intended for commercial and office use intensification. The project also responds to the MetroCore Jobs and Economy Land Use Plan that seeks to ensure an increase of uh, availability of future commercial space. The heritage retention component of the proposal also responds to the city's recently adopted heritage policies. 
So the proposal is a 22-story, 302 foot in height uh, commercial office building with an FSR of 17.35. The application includes the retention of the front, north side, and partial rear facades of the Cleland Kent Heritage Building on site. The new office building is proposed to extend above the heritage facades. As part of Restart Smart Vancouver initiative in response to COVID, it's expected that 1,073 jobs would result from a development of a building of this type and scale. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Just making sure. Thank you. Thank you. So we're on Please to the next, ahead. on the next slide. There we go. So prior to the existence of the Clellan Kent building, this site uh, and the surrounding area was home to a number of black families during the early 20th century, including a boarding facility where Joe Forte, the city's first lifeguard, called home. As the area was redeveloped for commercial uses, black families were displaced and residential uses were no longer permitted. The Clellan Kent building that stands on the site today is a two-story masonry building constructed in 1925. The building is valued for its vernacular commercial architecture and the role it played in the development of Victory Square area as a center for the newspaper business. The statement of significance and conservation plan were reviewed by the Heritage Commission in 2020. The commission supported the addition of the building to the register as a category C resource as a condition of enactment, a restrictive covenant would be registered to secure the heritage conservation and ongoing maintenance of the building's facades. The covenant would also require the owner to provide and install an interpretive plan or artwork that marks the site's historical association with the black community and the building's connection to the Victory Square area. Uh, through the application process, staff considered shadowing Im impacts from the proposed buildings on the nearby public realm. Shadowing impacts from the proposed building on Victory Square were assessed at the usual equinoxes and solstices uh, between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. The building's massing has been shaped to minimize shadowing onto Victory Square. The sculpted tower would shadow a portion of the south corner of the park in the early afternoon hours at the equinoxes, demonstrated in the two images second from the right. Additionally, the, despite no shadowing policy on Victory Square for November 11th, Remembrance Day, staff also assessed the shadow impacts for the duration of the annual ceremony given its cultural significance. Shaping of the tower has also mitigated shadowing onto the park for the duration of the ceremony, except for a portion of the west corner of the park at 11.30 demonstrated on the, in the bottom right image on the screen. Staff have determined that the shadow impact is supportable given the short duration, uh, short duration at the end of the ceremony. A virtual open house was held in January and February of this year. 77 pieces of correspondence were received through the rezoning process. Some folks supported the building size, neighborhood fit, and welcomed the additional office space while others felt that the height and the density were too great and were concerned about the impact on views and access to sunlight. A fixed commercial linkage contribution of nearly $2.5 million is expected. Uh, this, uh, that, along with the DCLs and public art fee, this project would yield nearly $8.5 million in public benefits. Staff do recommend that the proposed 22-story office building at 534 to 550 Canby Street be approved subject to the conditions outlined in Appendix B. The project meets the intent of the rezoning policy for the CBD and also responds to the Metro Corps Jobs and Economy Land Use Plan that seeks to ensure future availability of commercial space. Thank you, Council. Thank you very much. Um, does, that, does Council have any questions? Okay, and we do, just one second, just moving to my list here. I'm just going to read this out before we start with the list because we do have speakers to this, but if there's anyone who's not on, on the speakers list who wants to, oh, my, my apologies, one second.
Thanks, Council. It threw me off. We didn't have an applicant team last time. Is the applicant team here to speak to the application? Yes, we are. Are there any? Uh, please go ahead. Would you, do you have any? Or do you have a I, presentation? I, I do. We have we have a brief presentation. Okay, and I'll ask the clerks to make sure that's up on the screen. Can you see that? We can go ahead. And we that's great. Have that up. Please go ahead when you're ready. Okay. Well, good evening, Your Worship, and distinguished members of the council. Uh, my name is Dan Cooper. I'm the VP of Development for PC Urban Properties, and we are thrilled to bring forward to you tonight our uh, our project of 550 Candy. I'm joined tonight by our architect uh, Mark Thompson from MCM, as well as our CEO Brent Sachin from PC Urban and Jeff Rank, Senior Vice President Leasing from Quadril, our partners for this project. Uh, together, collectively, we bring a strong resume and commitment to delivering meaningful job space throughout the city. And the 550 Canby project is all about jobs, jobs next to transit in the downtown core. Locating less than a block from Stadium Skytrain Station, the, the project ticks virtually every policy box that applies. And we have had great engagement through this process. As new neighbors, it is fundamental to everything we do to uh, integrate into the social and historic fabric of the community. And through our efforts, we have met with most, if not all, of the neighbors and made relationships with many of them, including the Friends of Victory Square, which is a group involved in the rehabilitation of the park back in 2002, the BC Regiments Association, uh, responsible for Remembrance Day ceremonies, as well as the African Descent Society, representing some of the early Black Canadians' history on the site and in the neighbourhood. We've met with other community groups, businesses and landlords, such as the VCC, as well as the Metro Living Strata next door, to review our plans, listen to some of their concerns, as well as share in the revitalization uh, that this project brings, which is in line with policy. The Vancouver office market um, is going, undergoing considerable growth and is just catching up. As one of the fastest tech, gro tech growth markets in North America, it has the lowest overall vacancy rate and is well poised for a post pandemic recovery and is considered undersupplied currently from a market perspective. Located a block away from the post, also being developed by our partners Quadril, which will soon be home to uh, Amazon's Canadian headquarters and home to 7,000 workers and significant retail amenities, the downtown south or crosstown area um, is undergoing considerable change and emerging as a cultural and innovation district that will not only bring meaningful jobs and urban vibrancy, but will lead to economic diversification and resiliency for years to come. And now I'd like to pass it over to our architect, Mark Thompson, to take us through the design, and we're open to any questions you may have. Thank you, uh, Dan. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Great, thank you. So, um, as, as Nick mentioned, shadow uh, impacts and shadow um, mitigation was a significant uh, 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 generator of the, of the form, as was the heritage building, which is on site. There are two view cones that cross the site, which limits the height of the uh, ultimate height of the building. Um, in the second diagram, you can see how the, the extrusion of the site uh, goes up to those view cones. And then we carved major pieces of that extrusion away um, in response to the shadows, both at Equinox and at the uh, uh, time of the ceremony on November 11th. Um, the Heritage Building, uh, the Cleveland Kent Building is a significant element of our streetscape and um, having a, de a deference to that at street level was important. So we set the building back at grade. Um, we articulated the two volumes that are created by this um, uh, carving away, and then also um, terraced the uh, the mass to provide indoor and outdoor amenity. Um, that's really an opportunity created by that carving, and that all defines the, the the building shape and the design that we've been working on with the city over the last uh, year year or two. Next slide, Dan, please. As Dan mentioned, the program is predominantly workspace with some amenities, both interior and exterior, out onto those terraces. And at grade, there is a building lobby facing Canby and also 
retail flanking either side of that lobby to animate the street. Next slide, please. And this is a view of the, the, the public face of the building, a grade with the lobby in the middle uh, and retail elements either side, one um, contained within the Cleveland Kent building, the other one more directly off, off the lobby and to the street. But again, uh, enhancing and, and providing streetscape and animation along the street, including weather protection, was a primary goal of, of the design of how the building sits at grade and how it meets the ground. Next slide, please. Um, the building articulation was really um, defined by two sets of elements. One is its context, both to the heritage building on site and the uh, heritage dominated context of Victory Square that we are that we are in and a neighbor to, but also sustainability. So the elements that you see on the, on the building both provide solar uh, control in certain aspects and contextual relationship in uh, in other aspects as we as we move and articulate the building and the two forms that are created by this mass. Next slide, please. And as I mentioned earlier, the Cleveland Kent building and our response to that building was important. We've we sort of held the building, the, the new building up and away from the Cleveland Kent building so that we're able to very uh, quickly and easily identify what the heritage elements are separated from the modern elements surrounding it. The site is unusual in so much as that it has lanes uh, on three sides of the site. So it's bounded by uh, laneways on three sides. And two things about that. First, it, 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 it means that the heritage building actually presents itself with three elevations, which is unusual within uh, the heritage context. So we're able to display a, a whole building rather than just a front facade. And secondly, uh, we have the opportunity to introduce public realm and enhance the public realm in those lanes to create this sort of secondary set of laneways that, that we, we see as an important enhancement to both the safety, security, and animation of this area. Next slide. So this is a, a, an aerial shot of the building. You see the heritage building, how the rest of the building is disposed, the terraces, the amenity, and the upper and lower volumes created by uh, this response to sunlight on Victory Square. That's my presentation. Thanks. Thanks very much. Are there any questions from Council to staff of the applicant team? And please note, Council, that this is your only opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. I see Councillor Dominato. Councillor Dominato, questions? Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. And um, the questions are probably mostly best directed to the applicant. Um, my first question is just around um, uh, the retention and preservation of the heritage building. I think that's fantastic. Um, could you just elaborate on what will actually be in that space? Will it also be workspace, office space, or is it being used as an amenity space? I just wasn't clear on that. Dan, do, would you like me to take that one? Yes, please. Yeah, please. Okay. Um, so we have the, the lobby of the building is at grade in the middle of the of the block on Canby, and you walk into the lobby. There also is a separate entry into the Cleveland Kent building uh, from the street as well. Um, so what we in, what we envisage is uh, some sort of retail element. We think it's 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 really primed for some sort of food and beverage use, probably on two levels. Thank, thank you for clarifying that. Um, and then um, um, you referenced the terraces and amenity spaces, and it's a really interesting design. Uh, will those be only um, accessible to the commercial or office tenants, or will they be publicly accessible? The, those are accessible to the uh, commercial office tenants. That's the usual situation with amenities within office buildings within the downtown core. Thank you. Um, and just my last question, um, because in your presentation and staff presentation, you spoke to uh, the need for um, office and workspace in the downtown core. How, do you have interested tenants? I know you may not be able to name them, but is there, have already sort of seen an appetite for this to this particular space? I'm, I'm going to let Dan or maybe Jeff answer that question. Hey, go ahead, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff here. Uh, I would say we don't have any specific tenants, but I think we certainly are seeing uh, an emerging demand from technology companies and an overall strengthening sentiment about returning uh, to work. So we are expecting that 20, 
2022 and 2023, we'll, we'll see a resurgence of demand for, for office, but nothing specific at the moment. Thank you very much. That's all my questions, Chair. Thanks. Uh, more questions from Councillor Kirby Young? Councillor Kirby Young, questions to staff or the applicant? Uh, the question is the applicant, and um, it's this, and I'm wondering, sorry if my brain froze for a second there, long day. Um, I'm wondering if you have changed anything with respect to how you approach designing a commercial building like this after COVID, and is it anything to do with sort of like motionless uh, door openers, use of copper surfaces? I'm just curious in terms of, you know, you're still providing open spaces, and then how they're demised is up to the individual tenants. So I'm just wondering if there's been any sort of changes with respect to building design, um, HVAC, airflow, filtration, anything like that? I, I, can, I can answer that question. Um, so one, yes, yes, the answer is yes. And there's a number of different um, uh, levels of, of, of uh, change that we've made. Um, to talk about ventilation, we have operable windows, which is a newer thing within office buildings to, to create um, Op operable windows, that which which gives each occupant more control over their environment and the amount of fresh air that they get. Uh, we have floor by floor ventilation uh, with MERV filtration. So we've we've changed the filtration system. We've increased the amount of ventilation and um, given more occupant control. Uh, yes, there's smart building technology that can help with that ventilation, and it's really linked to the operable windows because. The, the 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 mechanical ventilation and the and the passive ventilation need to work together. Um, we have um, enhanced end of trip facilities um, for um, bicycles or people that, or pedestrians or riders or rollers. That includes individual um, end of trip facilities on each office floor, so there's more privacy and more control over your environment. Rather than in a in a in a group situation, you can choose that the the group um, end of trip facility, or you can choose a more private, more individualized um, end of trip facility on each floor. There's also unitized washrooms, which again provides more um, confidence and control over your environment when you're washing your hands or or uh, cleaning as as well. And then you notice that we have the in, the interior amenities linked to outdoor amenities. So again, the occupants can go to an outdoor amenity so that they have more access to light air and, and fresh air within within the project. Um, when it comes to um, the, the, the design of the office space uh, in, in particular, that's really down to the tenants. We do quite a lot of this work and we are seeing trends towards more distance and more meeting rooms. And like I said before, more of this individualized control over things like um, the environment or, or, or your day-to-day -day, um, use within the building. So a little bit more individualization is occurring and we're seeing more distance um, in terms of office layout. But that's a general trend. Um, and so what we do is, is that's really the tenants that come and uh, make their own decisions regarding how they lay out the space. Is that enough? Yeah, no, that's that's a very fulsome answer, and that's um, and I appreciate that. It's fascinating. Um, with respect to the heritage facade retention, were there any specific challenges that this project presented with respect to that, or not so much? Um, not really. We 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 we've done quite a lot of heritage retention, um, and currently we're working on the post, which is the largest heritage retention in the city, and we've we've been working in Gastown quite a bit it's not a very large heritage building vertically it's two to two and a half stories so um it, it should be relatively straightforward that that the, the way in which you retain it the, the technology that you need to use to do that is is pretty worked out now also we do have lane access on three on two of the three sides which is very helpful okay thank you i'll leave it there appreciate it councillor we questions to staff of the applicant yeah, a uh, question to the applicant. Looking at the natural assets, it talks a little bit about vines going up, um, a bit of the facade, but also it looks like there's trees on some of the setbacks on the upper floors. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the natural elements that you're putting towards this building? Sure. So I'm not a landscape architect, so I'm probably, I'm not going to talk about species, but I will talk about some of the principles that that we 
that we gave. What we wanted to do is, is ensure uh, that that that, net, that that outdoor environment does have a number of different characters and has as different sort of areas within it, both for working as well as for uh, breaks or gaps in between work. We're finding uh, as part of COVID that people are working in all sorts of different environments and and like to have that that um, that ability. So there's a number of different natural environments created on those different decks. There's also some urban agriculture elements that 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 we have as well. But the trees are important, we think, because it will it will attract birds, for instance, and and create that that sort of diversity of environment. So it isn't just a big flat patio. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And is that all your questions, Councillor Wee? Yeah, that's okay. all. Okay. Point of privilege. Oh, uh, yes. Swanson here. I'm having extreme tech issues, but I would like to ask a question oh, okay. when it's my I'll, turn. I'll add you to the queue. Um, did, did you need to be added to the queue here? Sure. Can you tell me how many are in front of me? Um, no one else. Councillor, we've just finished, so you can go ahead and ask okay. your questions. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm wondering to the staff, I see that there's a commercial linkage fee of 2.45 million, I guess, in exchange for increasing the FSR uh, from 7 to 17. Is that a little bit low for a commercial link linkage fee? And I'll ask staff to respond to that. Uh, thanks for the question, Councillor Swanson. So the the lower fee would probably be a result of the start the base so um, the base density that's allowable within this area of the downtown district. So you have a start a starting point that's a bit higher. So that would be why there's that um, smaller commercial linkage fee. Okay, second question is, are there any existing businesses that would be displaced? I'll uh, uh, refer that question over to the applicant. They'll have a better idea of uh, the businesses that are located there currently. And could the applicant respond to that? Yep, we confirm that there's there's no existing businesses that have uh, tenure beyond uh, beyond the, uh, the the intended start of our construction should this go through approvals. But would they like to stay if they could? Uh, we have actually had no, we have not had any indication of that, and we've had uh, um, uh, a lot of communication with those those existing tenants on on site. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay, uh, so council, we will now hear from the public, and I'm just going going to. Um, note that if there are any speakers for this item who wish to speak to council, please call toll free 1-833-353-8610 followed by participant code 94189-POUND. And that is before uh, the close of the speakers list. The phone number again, as I noted before, will be tweeted out and made available on the live stream. Any speakers in the council chambers, please come forward to the podium. And we do have registered speakers to this item council. And the first speaker is Stephen Travis, Travis, um, who is participating by phone. Do we have Stephen on the line? Hello, council. Go ahead. You have five minutes to speak. Uh, good, good evening, Acting Mayor, uh, De Genova Council, city, uh, city staff, and Vancouver residents. Again, my name is Steve Travis, and I am one of the founding members of the Friends of Victory Square, along with um, Cam Cathcart, Richard Evans, Constantine Papas, Archie Stacey, and El De Genova. Uh, and tonight I will be speaking in favor of this development proposal. Uh, qu a quick bit of history, just to give some context. Uh, I became involved with the Friends of Victory Square as the head of safety and security for Vancouver Community College from 1994 to 2002. Uh, in the 1990s, uh, those that were around at that time may remember that Victory Square had fallen into disrepair and our students actually did not feel safe coming to class. The Friends of Victory Square at that time put forward a design concept for the park board focused on returning the park to its former glory as a place of remembrance and a safe gathering place. Uh, 
the design focused on lighting up the old city hall maple trees and adding commemorative uh, World War I helmet uh, light standards that are throughout the park. Uh, the beautiful park that we enjoy today and the lights you see uh, was part and due to the efforts of uh, our group 20 years ago. Uh, in February 2020, the Friends of Victory Square were approached by the developer for 550 Canby to provide input into the public art element of their development proposal. Since that initial meeting, the Friends of Victory Square have met a number of times with the developer and uh, we have provided input into the building design, laneway, and the significance of the Victory Square neighborhood. Uh, I have been very impressed with the genuine interest and respect the developer has shown for our input. They have been very open to our ideas, such as tying the significance of the parade route between Beatty Street Armory and Victory Square Park into their design concept. They've also made changes, as was mentioned, to the masking of their building to minimize the shadow on the park, specifically around the November 11th ceremony. I believe the developer is committed to honoring the historical facade of the building and incorporating design elements, uh, which will be in keeping with the military and remembrance aspects of this important and historical neighborhood. The development is also, uh, the story of the developer is also open to having some of the public art funding go towards some sort of commemoration in the park itself, such as perhaps honoring uh, Victoria Cross recipients. As a, as a bit of interest, I currently work for another uh, city of Metro Vancouver municipality, and I do get to spend a significant amount of time uh, with city council as they deliberate on development proposals. From what I have witnessed firsthand from PC Urban, uh, this applicant, I can say that I have been very impressed with their interest in achieving community goals that go well beyond their own development proposal approval. Uh, for these reasons, I would recommend that council support uh, this development proposal. It will not only benefit future occupants of this building, but I believe they will be an important partner in the neighborhood as a whole. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, there aren't any questions for you, but thank you for making the time to speak to Council. Our next uh, speaker is Fareed Rohani, on Honorary Colonel, uh, British Columbia Regiment. Colonel Rohani, are you on the line? I am. Uh, thank you very much. Please uh, go ahead. Good evening. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, council members, and thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Dijova. My name is Farid Rohani. I'm the honorary colonel of the British Columbia Regiment and a member of the BC Regimental Association. We are located at 620 Beatty Street Drill Hall, a Victorian era building with the longest tie to the ties to the neighborhood. Needless to say, we have had a long-standing connection to Victory Square Park through my involvement with the BC Regiment and the association past soldiers that have served and remembrance of those from our regiment that perished fighting evil. I would like first to acknowledge and applaud PC Urban for their engagement of our regimental association, members, past and present commanding officers, and frequent genuine engagement with members of the Friends of Victory Square. As you may already be aware, its makeup is a group of volunteers who have been stewards of this important park for many years. While many have a particular connection to the annual commemoration event on November 11th, including our very good late friend, Cam Cathart, who was the recognized voice of many Remembrance Day ceremonies. We also have an interest in this park becoming a welcoming, inclusive, safe place for the public all year round. PC Urban first reached out to members of this group to better understand our use and connection to Victory Square, understand it and discuss potential shadow impacts, and furthermore, to discuss the proposed public realm around 550 Canby. Following initial discussions, uh, our conversation then involved, evolved into ways PC Urban could potentially support improved commemoration at and around Victory Square. On the item of shadows, which we have discussed frequently, we have reviewed this extensively with PC Urban. Their team and architects can confirm we have no issue with the very minor shadow impact on the southwest corner on November 11th. Most of you have probably attended our ceremonies on November 11th, 
and it is extremely rare that we are not in cloud cover, rain, or other uh, issues, snow, etc. Our serving members are not focused on weather, however, ever. Frankly, those who have served are used to unpleasant weather, but rather the ceremony and the art of act of remembrance on November 11th. Secondly, we have been working with PC Urban and their public art consultants on some exciting ideas to improve the commemoration along the three alleyways surrounding the property. We are used as staging areas, <coughs> excuse me, which are used as staging areas for the procession on November 11th, such as panels on the ground or lighting above. We look forward to these ideas being further developed and have confidence in a quality outcome, given the volunteers and experts involved, but more so hearing our input as custodians of the area. Finally, I will just note that the building architecture itself is uh, great, it's handsome in design, and new people that will work and will visit the building will bring a new vibrancy to the street, which is really welcome. Thank you, and I hope Council approves this rezoning this evening. Thank you, and I, I have to offer my sincere apologies. I accidentally, Council, had skipped over speaker number two, and I'd like to apologize to speaker number two, Richard Evans, who I hope is still on the line, former chair, local building owner, and friend of Victory Square. Richard, are you on the line? Hello. Hi, and my apologies for yeah. skipping over you by accident. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor and Council, thank you for this opportunity to pro provide comment on the rezoning application for 534 to 550 Candy Street. I speak in support of the application. As mentioned, my name is Richard Evans and I'm part owner of the Architecture Centre, a heritage building located one block north of the subject site. I'm also co-founder and former chair of the Friends of Victory Square, a group who received a Vancouver Heritage Award in 2007 for their success in advocating for improvements to the park that reinforced the historic significance of the public space and provided supports for ceremonies to honor and remember those who have faced conflict and experienced personal impact on our behalf. I note that the application has received support with conditions from both the Urban Design Panel and Vancouver Heritage Commission. I also note that the project is right on the edge of downtown high-rise forms of development and the lower building forms of the heritage districts to the north and east. The rezoning will permit an increase to the permitted floor floor space ratio and height of the building to bring it more in line with recent developments to the south and west, such as Amazon's new development at the former post office site. The project makes sense from this point of view and is well located for access from the Stadium Chinatown Skytrain station. As an owner of an asset in the area, I think that the proposed development will benefit both me personally and the area generally. As a person with considerable personal interest in volunteer investment in Victory Square Park, I know that over the past year, the development team has reached out to the Friends of Victory Square, and my assessment is that this engagement has been very respectful and robust. The building has been set back, as been mentioned, at the top to minimize shadow impacts on the park, and the public art program has specifically addressed the importance of Victory Square Park, and is built on the historic and commemorative themes that the friends lobbied hard for years ago. I and my friends' colleagues, as you've you heard, applaud these measures and are grateful in particular for the care taken in minimizing shadow impacts on the park. This will benefit both the park on Remembrance Day and for the public use of the park over the year generally. My concluding comments have to do with the public art program and how the program could potentially be expanded to include ongoing legacy program support for places like Victory Square Park. A number of years ago, the Friends of Victory Square were able to secure support to partner, to partner with Coastal Jazz and Blues Society to sponsor performances in the park as part of the Jazz Festival. And for a number of years, the Friends hosted Lunar New Year's activities in support of Vancouver Chinese New Year celebrations and parade. These kinds of things are impossible for volunteer organizations to sustain without ongoing staff and administration support. I believe that there is considerable public benefit merit 
in considering legacy program funding, in addition to fixed pro, uh, capital funding for ongoing arts programs and events in key public spaces throughout the city, and in particular, Victory Square Park. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. There are no questions for you. I appreciate that. And again, sorry for, for missing you before calling speaker three. Speaker number four is Gary Jobin, a director of Blade Runners. Gary, are you on the line? We have Gary uh, yes, I am. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. You have five minutes to speak to council. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor and Council. Uh, my name's Gary Jobin. I'm a longtime resident of uh, Vancouver's downtown east side, and for the last 25 years, I've had the pleasure of recording a program called Blade Runners. Our program is, you know, is to help street-involved youth uh, build careers in the construction trades, and uh, we're in full support of PC Urban's uh, proposal here. Uh, we'll take many kids, uh, we'll provide employment for many kids, uh, between the ages of 19 to 30, give them long-term attachment to the workplace, build skills, and uh, lead them to, you know, become productive members of society. So we want to wish, uh, with Council's approval, uh, PC Urban, all the best of luck with this, and uh, we're in full support of this project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There aren't any questions for you. Thanks for making the time to, to call in tonight. Um, speaker number five is Constantine Appas, founding member of Friends of Victory Square. Constantine, are you on the line? I am. Please go ahead. You have five minutes to speak to council. Thank you. Good evening, Deputy Mayor and Council. My name is Constantine Pappas. I'm an owner of the Pappas Building on the corner of Hamilton and Pender Streets, which is situated adjacent to Victory Square Park for one half of one block on the Hamilton Street side. I've been a member of the Friends of Victory Square since its inception in 2002, and our group has worked closely with the principals of this redevelopment properly and some of its planning. I support this project. The proposed building is a beautiful architectural structure with an attractive storefront and entrance, which has been thoughtfully designed to allow the sun to fully shine on Victory Square on certain days of the year when it would be obscured. Unfortunately, the Pappas building will be affected by the shadow, but I feel that this is a small price to pay for the overwhelming positive attributes that this project will bring into the area. This project also nicely complements the current new project under construction at the old post office on the corner of Hamilton and Georgia Streets, which will also bring a much needed positive influx of workers into the area. These new workers will undoubtedly contribute to the socio-economic status of the area. The Friends of Victory Square have worked closely with the development concepts of art and lighting for the front of the building, the alley, the corridor to Victory Square, and to Victory Square itself. We have also been involved in discussing the implementation of current social as well as historical elements into the park with a developer who has been very accommodating. I'm pleased that the front area as well as the adjacent alley bordering the new building will be handsomely illuminated and that the corridor between the building and Victory Square can be highlighted. There will also be many related beneficial projects to Victory Square itself, which will further honor our war veterans. This project will also strengthen and complement the Chinatown corridor and will socially and economically support the adjacent BCC building on Pender Street. There's a wonderful restaurant and bakery open to the public at the school, which is operated by the students. Currently, the park is enjoyed by students and residents on sunny days and even not so sunny days. And this amenity would also be extended into to the new workers in the area. In my opinion, this redevelopment project will be a major socioeconomic benefit to the park, which will enhance the daily lives of workers, residents, students, and visitors alike. It will complementarily uplift the entire surrounding area. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, there aren't any questions for you, but thanks for speaking tonight. Um, speaker number six is Nathan Davidovich, 
Nathan, are you there? Uh, hello. Hey, yes, do you hear me? I can okay. hear you just fine. Please go ahead. As you oh, know, okay. you have Thank five you minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, 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 I'm going to speak about the Camby Street traffic plan, or, or there is no plan, of course. The staff has not presented anything. Uh, you know, the street is now two ways, which is way better than the previous one way. However, other intersecting streets are proposed to be changed to two ways, Cordova and Dunsmuir, but without a proper plan, the public will suffer. Uh, there is a bus service, but no proper plan to speed the buses that travel at an average speed of about 10 kilometers per hour. On some blocks on Canby Street, parking is available 24-7. Even during the rush hour, uh, 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 parking is there. And during the rush hour, there's a bus every four or five minutes. Uh, when I ask for a left turn green arrow to help the number 17 Oak bus access from southbound Camby Street to eastbound Nelson and the Camby Bridge, my request was denied by staff. Everyone wants to speed the buses, but canceling bus stop is the only thing done by the staff. And according to the transit union, it's not, it's not really speeding up the buses anyhow. It's penalizing uh, the passengers. Uh, the bus terminus at Lowell Park for the North Shore buses will have to be moved when the new art gallery moves in there. Well, what is the plan? We need to know now. We have to decide where are all these buses from the North Shore going to park. Stadium station, main entrance on Beatty and Dunsmuir, does not have bus service even. It's the only SkyTrain station with so many accessibility issues and no one wants to do anything about it. For many years, the streets around Victory Square were used as a streetcar and bus terminus. Why not have a proper terminus there again? So all the local Vancouver buses, especially routes 5, 6, 17, and 50, could stop there. The bus driver won it because there is a washroom available for them at Victory Square, and they don't need to go inside Vancouver Community College to use the washroom. And, uh, you know, uh, so this is just another example of, of not having proper transportation plan uh, for uh, especially the downtown area of Vancouver. Well, thank you very much for listening. Thanks, uh, Nathan. There aren't any questions for you. Um, speaker number seven, Colin Rose. Hello. Hi, Can Colin. you hear me okay? Yes, please go ahead. You have five minutes to speak to council. Hi, thank you to the deputy mayor and council for taking time to consider my perspective on the proposal. My name is Colin Rose and I'm calling in tonight to support the development at 550 Canby. I own and operate a digital marketing firm and I've been working in the area for about six years now. We just moved offices this summer, so I have a fair amount of first-hand experience looking for office space in the area. Uh, we spent several years growing up in the Dominion building at uh, Victory Square and we've grown to a larger location now on Carroll and Pender. And I walk past the development site on Canby from my apartment downtown every day and uh, just so many up and coming growing businesses like mine that I've come to know working in this area. And I just, I personally love working here because it's very central and just has so much character and history around it. So generally speaking, I think there's many areas around here that are underutilized and 550 can be being one of them. So I wanted to take the time to voice my support here today because by animating these tired zones to borrow a term from the architect that was presenting earlier, I think that this whole area uh, will benefit. Um, I did want to mention in particular, I'm an ardent supporter of preserving facades while modernizing the lot. So I really appreciate this has been included. Uh, just the fact that the whole area will be refreshed, injects new life into the street, streetscapes, whether it's public walkways and, and lighting or new retail opportunities for um, the economic recovery for Vancouver. So 
Uh, the more we work to improve this iconic neighborhood, the safer it becomes, uh, which is an important daily consideration for my team here as we commute back and forth from the SkyTrain to the Chinatown area. So to summarize, because of the added office space, street level retail, public improvements, I'd like to encourage council to approve PC Urban's proposal. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much, Colin. There aren't any questions for you. We'll call speaker eight, Filiberto Braglia. Filiberto, are you Hi. there? Please yes, go ahead, I'm you on have the line. five Thank minutes to speak to council. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak in this forum. Uh, my name is Filiberto Braglia. I live in the area very close to the, uh, to the uh, rezoning uh, location. And I am opposed to this. Part I'm not opposed to the zoning per se, but I'm opposed to this particular proposal because of its dimension and position. The building is would be twice as high as the other office buildings uh, just next to it, and it's far larger than any other building in the same area. Moreover, it's also very close to at least a dozen, I think, residential buildings, including where I live. And because of its sheer size, its large footprint, and its location, it will permanently deprive hundreds of homes of their view over a number of iconic landmarks in the area, including Victoria Square, Canada Place, the Vancouver Lookout, the Dominion Building, and also a chunk of the Borhard Inlet and of the North Shore Coast. This view uh, is one of the reasons we decided to. Uh, buy our home in this area, and I think that's very much true for many of our neighbors. Uh, I provided a picture in support uh, of my argument that shows the expected impact of the building in its current design from uh, my point of view, from my balcony, but that's a reference that's fairly similar to many other uh, units in the area, many, many other homes in the area. And as you can see from, uh, uh, from the uh, outline in white, uh, I don't know if the picture is on the screen or anything. It is. Because the I picture is up on delay. the screen. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. As you can see, uh, the building will be really big, really close by, and its size would immediately cover all these important landmarks that we really enjoy from, uh, to, to be able to see from our home. Um, on top of that, I'm also wondering that such a tall building being all covered in metal and glass would also generate a lot of reflections all around. And I've seen shadow studies, but I haven't seen light reflection studies. And I'm worried of situations where beyond the standard, you know, annoyance of reflections in your eyes, you have, we have a situation like last summer's heat wave and reflections create even more light and heat concentrated on our homes. Uh, so in essence, I am essentially worried that allowing this kind of development will impact negatively ours and our neighbors' properties. The view, as I said, is one of the uh, main reasons we moved into this, uh, into this home. And uh, a good view also means property value, of course. So that would impact our property values the value of our property, but it would also impact, in a sense, our quality of life because it would deprive us of things we really enjoy to be able to see. I would also point out that many of us these days work from home, especially in the tech, uh, in the tech department. I work in technology. My wife works in technology. Most of our friends work in the technology department in different tech companies in the area. And let me guarantee you, m most tech companies went to embrace working from home and are not going back. They don't plan to go back, which means they don't need such big offices anymore. So uh, just wrap this in, uh, things up. Uh, I'm not opposed to the rezoning per se. I agree that it can improve the overall value of the neighborhood. I'd rather, I'm rather opposed to this particular design. Uh, for instance, if the proposal were for a smaller building similar to what's already there in kind of size and height, and in general sort of more aware of its impact on, its, on the immediate neighborhood, I would have no considerations, no, uh, no problem supporting it. But as it is, it, I am really worried that the impact would be 
negative. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I had to say, and uh, I thank you again very much for uh, this opportunity. Thank you very much. There aren't any questions for you, and we will move on to speaker number nine, who I understand is here in person, John Van Dyke. And I'll just give you a moment to come forward to the podium. Or actually, clerk, do we have any procedures or protocols we have to follow? Okay, good. Thank you. And and uh, I'll start your timer. Your timer's just to the right, so you can see your time. Um, you have up to five minutes. I'll start your timer now. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Deputy Mayor, Council, and staff. Uh, my name is John Van Dyke. Uh, my wife and I have lived in the the area for over ten years. Uh, eight years we were in the Frenzy Towers at uh, at Abbott and uh, Expo Boulevard, and then. Last year, we bought a unit in uh, 531 Beatty, which is the uh, seven-story building behind this proposed development. So on the graphic that I have there in the top left, that tiny little building, the seven-story, that's where we live. That's, I managed to find a picture. They actually included that one picture in their submission. But other than that, they ignore it. So. This appears to me to be the last development in this, what I could maybe call the cross-town BD area. So, you know, you, you had um, International Village, Frenzy Towers, you had um, all the old buildings redone on BD. Uh, there's a parkade beside us, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And the office tower at Dunsmere and um, BD. But this is the last one that is, is, is um, left and the neighborhood, if you want to call it, is kind of a mix of new buildings and you know, newer buildings and heritage buildings. So I'm opposed uh, to this current proposed building as there's been no consideration given to the reduction of the natural light that's going to, to, to us residents in the building. And if we go to the next uh, slide there, um, I asked some of my fellow residents, I gave names because I think it's always good to have people's names up there, but this is what they're going to see when they look out their windows. Not the red, like the red I've highlighted, but that's what you're losing when this building goes up, you know, and they talk um, a lot about shadow studies and all this razzle-dazzle graphics and everything, but really this is what we see when this building goes up. And you know, there's going to be a, a, a big loss to us in natural light that's coming in. And for a lot of them, there'll be a loss of sunshine. And then you'll see that in some of the comments that have been given to uh, written submissions, the, the, some of the opposed ones, they make mention of that. Um, the other thing that is not discussed is the Heritage Building is really just an old two-story brick building. You know, um, and, and they're making so much of it. And, and I love heritage, but let's not be, um, uh, let's not buy into this argument that preserving an old brick wall is somehow uh, justifies a development like this. Um, you know, if you go by those buildings, you'll see the, the inside, the structure, there's gorgeous wood fir beams in there, uh, timber decking. But all that's gone because they want to parkade there. So, you know, it, it, just get rid of the, the heritage building. Get rid of the walls if you're going to do that. Or save it. You know, save those wood beams that you see in uh, Gastown and Yale Town and other areas. So, moving on, trying to hopefully stay in five minutes here. I wanted to leave you with three issues here. One, um, the city staff referral report. There's two errors in that. Page six when they talk about building separation, they state will have no effect on the privacy and sunlight to us at 531 Beatty Street. Fake news. Page seven, shadow impacts. No shadow impacts to 530 Beatty during the day. During the day, well, how can you, how, when else do you get shadow impacts? You're not gonna have it at night, but how can you not say there's gonna be no shadow impacts when you look at those red squares there, we're going to have shadow impacts. So again, you know, something's not right here. Um, number two, 
in there, the developer says, yes, he received feedback from us, uh, but didn't address our concerns. And number three, why do we need a 17.35 FSR, an increase of 250% over the current one? Like, why? If, we, if you reduce the 10-story building down to three stories, reducing 42,000 square feet, and your FSR is then 14.71, a 200% increase. They should be happy with a 200% increase. So in conclusion, um, I would like council to give consideration to our concerns and don't be overshadowed by you know, the $8 million that you receive in revenue and, and the claims that there's a shortage of office space when you walk down the street, there's four lease signs up everywhere. So there's so many arguments made on this pro, but let's look at our concerns. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I was waiting for you to finish your last sentence there. Um, and there aren't any questions for you, but thank you for coming to speak to council. Uh, now, I'll, I'll ask the clerk, are there any other speakers on the line at the moment? Yes, Chair, there's one additional speaker. Okay, um, there's one additional speaker. We'll hear from the speaker. And if I could ask the speaker to state your full name and whether or not you're a resident of Vancouver. Good evening, Council. Can you hear me? Yes. Could you please state your full name and, and we ask you to state if you're a resident of Vancouver or not? Absolutely. Council, my name is Scott Woodworth, and I'm a resident of Vancouver and currently an owner and resident at 531 Beatty Street, basically right underneath the uh, proposed structure, shall we call it. And please go ahead. You have five minutes to speak to Council if I didn't make that clear. Great. Good evening, Council. Thanks for having me. Um, I appreciate the time. I did submit written comments, but uh, in watching the proceedings, I saw that those are not read out. Um, so hopefully some of you got a chance to read them in advance. Um, I've been a renter for three years and then an owner for eight years for a total of 11 years here at 531 Beatty Street. I live and work in downtown. I work at a local public school in the West End and I love calling Beatty Street my home. Amidst all the constant and sometimes challenging activity, I can always still see why I chose to call this my home here in downtown Vancouver. I often find great value simply sitting on the patio of our shared outdoor sun garden space at the building, which conveniently faces the structure proposed here at Canby Street. I also enjoy afternoon sun in my bedroom, which also faces Canby Street. The recent application to develop at 534 and 550 Canby leaves me feeling less than optimistic about my future and the home in the city that is potentially not considering residents or families hoping to reside in downtown. I'm realistic in knowing that there will always be noise, construction and development close to me, but the drawings that we've all seen today speak a new story. Conveniently, the structures don't look as large as they actually will be in most of the drawings. You saw in the uh, prior speaker the actual size of how large this building will actually be. The small side of it will still tower over the largest building around it. In the rear of our building, which faces can be, there is a patio garden. Nobody will ever use that patio garden again, and the plants will die. If the development at 534 550 can be moves forward, the building's shared sun patio will ironically never even see sunlight again. As somebody who struggles with minimal sunlight, I also worry about the loss of light year round to all the residents around the area. It's not just the building that's going to be completely crushed by this structure, it's everybody around. I strongly urge the city to consider the steps they're taking in allowing further developments of this size and magnitude to take place in the neighborhood. This is a huge adjustment to the zoning and simply caters to more sky rises in an area which is not zoned to have these structures. We heard a great amount of um, positive feedback from the Friends of Victory Square. I think it's amazing they were considered in this project, but I do ask, could this project not go forward being half the size and still being a massive structure? 
It would still meet all the needs that everybody showed for all their little votes of support, but it does not have to be this size. This is something we will all see from everywhere around Vancouver if you have a view of the skyline. I strongly urge people to think about the human element in this neighborhood. I ask anybody with voting capabilities to please take a moment to reflect on the impact your decisions in adjusting the zoning to meet corporate needs would make on the many people who call the area home or a breather from the suffocating towers of the financial district, which already look like this. There's no reason to adjust or alter the current zoning so that people's homes and lives are being used as pawns in this proposal. I also want to mention there were some fantastic comments from people in the area, and I agree, lots of people in support about all the different needs being met. As the speaker before me mentioned, I was part of a group that met with the group. We were mentioned, but none of us were in support. So I wonder how many other people were in support other than the Friends of Victory Square. My guess is many like us were not in support. Thank you. I appreciate your time. And I hope that we cannot be tricked by the fact that we're keeping four brick walls to build this massive structure and block many people's enjoyment of the city. Thank you, Council. Thanks very much. Um, there aren't any questions for you. I'm just gonna check with the clerk. And clerk, are there any other speakers on the line? No additional speakers, Chair. Okay, and uh, seeing that's my second call um, for speakers, I'm gonna do a third call uh, for speakers. If there are any additional speakers for this item who wish to speak to council, please call toll free 1-833-353-8610, followed by participant code 94189-POUND before the close of the speaker's list. The phone number will be tweeted out and made available on the live stream. Any speakers um, in the council chamber or in the building uh, who'd like to speak uh, and haven't, uh, please come, come forward. And uh, council, I'm suggesting we take a five minute break as per our process to give speakers a chance to call in. It's 7.52, so we will come back at 7.58 because it's almost 7.53 right now. 7.58, we'll be back, thanks.
Clark, are there any other speakers on the line? Oh, sorry. Just one moment. All right, um, and it's uh, it's after 7.58, so we are back, Council, and I'll ask the clerk, uh, are there any other speakers on the line for this item? Would the clerk please confirm, or are there any other speakers on the line? No speakers, Chair. Thank you very much. As few or no public comments were received on this item after 5 p.m. today, I suggest we now close receipt of public comments and move on um, to hear closing comments, ask further questions to staff, and to make a decision. Does the applicant have any closing comments? I'm just waiting to hear from the applicant. No, we don't. Do Thank not. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. And does staff have any closing comments? Uh, no closing comments from staff. Thank you. Thank you. And question, council, do you have any questions for staff? Okay. Um, seeing just one. Thanks. Um, all right. So, I, Council, do we have a motion? Oh, sorry, Councilor Carr, I'll just make sure your microphone's on there for you. Sorry. And put you on the queue. Great. Thank Go you. ahead. Yep. I'm happy to move the recommendations. Do we have a seconder? Councilor Boyle. I saw Councilor Fry first, but I'll try and give equal time to no people who are. No problem at all. Who are Tuning in virtually as well. Thank you for being there. Um, and is there any discussion on this? C 
seeing no one on the queue, uh, I will call a oh, Councillor Kirby Young. Yeah, I wonder if there's an opportunity to follow up with a question to staff at this point. Well, you can do that through points of information now. That can we'll I do that through a point of information? Uh, go ahead. Um, I wonder if I could just ask uh, staff if they could comment on the concerns raised by particularly the last two speakers with respect to um, the diminishment of sunlight, the buildings behind, um, I believe it was at 531.80 was one of the ones that was cited with respect to shadowing um, on those buildings. Thank you, Councillor. This is Carl Stanford Development Punter. Um, just the the shadowing is cast northwards towards the park. 531 BD is the southeast. Between 10 to 4, the shadowing stays mostly in the forward arc away from 531 BD. I believe what that sh uh, the line referring to the shadowing was. I'm sorry, could you just explain. repeat that, that last part? You said the shadowing stays, and I didn't catch that. Yes, so the shadowing is cast northwards towards Victory Square oh, okay. in that direction. And 531 BD is slightly be is behind the building, it's to the southeast at an angle. So the shadowing between 10 to 4, as we typically measure shadowing, doesn't affect the building in an appreciative way as we calculate it. In terms of the daylight issue, um, we have standards that we apply between towers of, um, between two residential towers, because they're occupying the building more continuously than an office building of 80 foot separation between towers and between a residential and commercial building, which is not occupied as continuously and intensively as a residential building. We have a standard of 60 foot separation. So this building has achieved that standard <clears throat> and it isn't casting shadows onto the building behind it because the shadows are cast forward towards the park. So the park was more our area of concern in our examination. Okay. Thank we you. also have horizontal angle of daylight policy, which governs uh, views outwards of buildings. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, is, is that all your questions, Councillor Kirby? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, seeing no one else on the queue, uh, Council, I will take us to a vote. Please vote on screen. And Councillor Bly, did you require a vote assist? Thank you, in favor. Okay, there we go. And I'll ask the clerk to bring up the vote. And that passes um, unanimously, Council, with no one in opposition. Thank you. And now we will move on to item number three. Just give everyone a moment. And I'll just give staff a moment in case we have to change over here. Okay, sorry about that. There we go. Uh, all right, council, we are on to item number three, CDI, or sorry, CD1 rezoning, 8804 Osler Street. Um, does any member of council wish to declare a conflict of interest on item three? Seeing none, the clerk will now read the application and summary of correspondence received. This is an application by DA Architects and Planners to rezone 8804 Osler Street from MC1 Industrial District to CD1 Comprehensive Development District to permit the development of a six-story mixed-use building with 38 strata titled residential units and ground floor commercial use. A height of 24.8 meters and a floor space ratio of 3.05 are proposed. 
The general manager of urban uh, planning, urban design, and sustainability recommends approval subject to conditions as set out in the summary and recommendation. The following correspondence has been received since referral to public hearing. Six pieces of correspondence in support and three pieces of correspondence in opposition. And this represents all correspondence received up to 5 p.m. today. Thank you very much. And any speakers uh, for this item who wish to speak to council, uh, please call toll free 1-833-353-8610, followed by participant code 94189 pound before the close of the speakers list. The phone number will be tweeted out and made available on the live stream. There will be an opportunity for those on the phone or in person to speak at the end of the registered speakers list also. And we have Tess Munro, Rezoning Planner, Rezoning Center, Planning, Urban Design and Sustainability here to present the application. I see Councillor Carr on the queue. Yes. Councillor Carr? Yes, thanks. Since we have no speakers on our speakers list, I move uh, to waive the presentation. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Boyle. Thanks, Councillor Boyle. And uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, but council has chosen to waive the presentation. Um, council, we don't have any registered speakers, as Councillor Carr had noted. Um, but it is, just, just give me one moment. But I'd also ask if the applicant team has a presentation who would like to present. Uh, we don't have a presentation. It's Al Johnson from DA Architects. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Council, do you have any questions to either the, either staff or the applicant? And I'll note that this is the only chance you'll have to ask the applicant questions. Okay. Um, Seeing none, I, I again, I'll call a, a second and uh, third time here for additional speakers. And then as is our practice, we'll take a five minute break council to make sure that any additional speakers have an opportunity to call in. So again, if there are any additional speakers for this item who wish to speak to council, please call toll free 1-833-353-8610 followed by participant code 94189-POUND. Uh, for the close of the speakers list in five minutes. A phone number will be tweeted out and made available also on the live stream. And any speakers in council chambers, please come forward um, towards the podium and, and we will hear from you in five minutes. Just one moment. Before we take that break, I just wanted to confirm that there are no speakers currently on the line. Are there any speakers on the line, Clerk? Correct, no speakers, Chair. Thank you very much. So we'll take a five minute break and um, we will come back at 816 Council.
Yes, there is one additional speaker for this item. Thanks very much. And I'd ask the speaker, please state your full name. And we ask you also to tell us if you're a resident of Vancouver. Just yes or no is fine. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is, is uh, Hui Jun Yan. I'm a resident of the Marple neighborhood. Uh, I'm calling to uh, support this new project, uh, this 8804 Osler project. Uh, um, I used to um, uh, uh, have my education in EBC, and I lived in this neighborhood for a long time. Um, I used to work as a construction estimator, and now I'm a full-time realtor. I'm sure everybody knows right now the real estate market is red hot, and the only reason is because of the lack of supply. So I think uh, uh, for like big cities like Vancouver, go vertical is the only way to resolve the supply issue. So uh, I'm support. I support this project, and I support like. Uh, Basically, lots of the new development, uh, which can, you know, provide lots of uh, future housing, especially like for um, uh, for people like me, like young professionals. So we we don't need like a big houses, big duplex, uh, like uh, small uh, small one bedroom, two bedroom um, condos would do. So um, I I just wanna uh, say that I support this project. Thank you. Thanks very much. There aren't any questions for you, but thanks for calling in. Uh, I'll ask if there's any other speakers on the line. No additional speakers, Chair. Okay. Um, as as uh, no public comments were, or I should say, uh, as few or no public comments were received on this item after 5 p.m. today, I suggest we now close receipt of public comments and move on to hearing closing comments, asking further questions of staff um, and making a decision. Does the applicant have any closing comments? Uh, Act Mayor, Council, we have no uh, closing comments. Thank you. Thanks. Does staff have any closing comments? No closing comments. Thank you. Okay. And does Council have any questions for staff? No, move the recommendations, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Kirby Young, do I have a seconder? Thanks, Councillor Carr. And do we have any debate on this item? Councillor Hardwick, go ahead. Uh, thank you. So, um, 38 strata title residential units, say no more. Um, again, we continue to do these kind of rezonings, which just will continue to inflate land values. And again, the underlying policy on which these decisions are being made is flawed. And so I will be opposing. At all, Councillor Hardwick? Yep. Thanks. Uh, seeing no one else on the queue, I'll call the vote. Please vote on screen. Sir, no worries. Did you want to vote assist? Thanks, and that passes with Councillor Hardwick in opposition. And now, Council, we're on to our final item of the evening, and it is CD1 rezoning. 750 Southwest Marine Drive. Does any member of council wish to declare a conflict of interest on item four? Seeing none, um, the clerk will now read the application and summary of correspondence received. Uh, this is an application by Proscenium Architecture and Interiors Incorporated to rezone 750 Southwest Marine Drive from I-2 Industrial District to CD-1 Comprehensive Development District to permit the development of a seven-story mixed employment building containing light industrial, office, and retail space. A height of 32.2 meters with additional height uh, for a, a rooftop amenity and a floor space ratio of 5.0 are proposed. The General Manager of Planning and Urban Design and Sustainability 
uh, recommends approval subject to conditions set out in the summary and recommendation. The following correspondence has been received since referral to public hearing. Five pieces of correspondence in support. This represents all correspondence received up to 5 p.m. today. Thanks. We have uh, Joseph Tohill here from the uh, rezoning or rezoning planner from the rezoning center, planning, urban design, and sustainability here to present the application. Oh, Councillor Carr is on the queue. Yes, um, thanks. Uh, yes, as, as we have no speakers on the um, list to speak to the council on this matter, I move to waive the presentation. Do you have a second? Do we have a second for that motion? And Councillor Bly. Okay, and all in favor, please say yay. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none opposed. Um, thank you very much, but we won't be needing the presentation. Um, is the applicant team here to speak to the application? Good evening, Deputy Mayor. It's Byron Chard of Chard Development. I want to please go ahead if you have a if you have a presentation. Thank you very much for considering a proposal this evening. We did not have a presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Council, are there any questions to staff or the applicant team? I'll just uh, remind you that this is the only opportunity that Council has to ask questions of the applicant. Okay, I don't see any. Um, if there are any speakers for this item, I understand there are no registered speakers, but if there are any speakers for this item who wish to speak to council, please call toll free 1-833-353-8610 followed by participant code 94189 pound before the close of the speakers list. The phone number will be tweeted out and made available on the live stream. Any speakers in the council chamber, please come forward to the podium. I'm not seeing any. I'll ask the clerk if there are any speakers on the line. There's one speaker online, Chair. Okay, um, thanks. And, and I'll ask the speaker just before you begin, if you would please um, uh, give us your full name and just a yes or no whether or not you're a resident of Vancouver. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm a resident of Vancouver. My name is Dan Jordan. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm here to speak tonight in support of Chard Development application for 750 Southwest Marine Drive. Um, I'm a commercial real estate broker who focuses specifically on the Strata office market, and I'm thrilled to see a project like this come before you for consideration. Uh, I've worked in the field for over 15 years, and over that time, I've never seen uh, a shortage of supply of Strata office space like we're experiencing today. Um, the vacancy for this kind of product is, is close to zero. Um, I have many clients in search of just this kind of product to purchase and set up their businesses. Um, but unfortunately, with uh, a, a lack of a, available supply, uh, a lot of those purchasers need to look to other municipalities like, like Burnaby or Richmond uh, to set up business uh, due to a lack of available options. Um, I would love to see those businesses stay in Vancouver, uh, set up shop in, in South Vancouver and and uh, have residents in the neighborhood be able to have businesses close to home. Um, the space that's proposed by Chart is exactly the kind of product that a lot of my clients have been looking for. It's well-designed, high quality, close to transit, has amenities that employees and employers would find very appealing. Uh, so I, I hope this project gets the green light from council tonight. Uh, as I believe it's one that will be highly sought after once it's built. Thank you. Thanks very much. There aren't any questions for you. I'll just ask the clerk if we have any other speakers on the line. No additional speakers, Chair. Okay, so I'm going to call a second and third time now uh, for any additional speakers uh, for this item who wish to speak to Council, please call toll free. 1-833-353-8610, followed by participant code 94189-POUND before the close of the speakers list. The phone number will be tweeted out and made available on the live stream. There will be an opportunity for those on the phone or in person to speak um, after the five minutes is up. And we will come back at 8.35. Thanks so much.
Okay, um, council, we're back, and I'll just ask the clerk if we have any speakers waiting on the line. No speakers on the line, Chair. Thank you. Uh, as few or no public comments were received on this item after 5 p.m. today, I suggest we now close the receipt of public comments and move on to hearing closing comments, asking further questions of staff, and making a decision. Does the applicant have any closing comments? No further comments, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Does staff have any closing comments? No closing comments. Thank you. Thanks. And council, do you have any questions for staff? Just waiting a minute. Thank you, Councillor Carr. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Fry, thanks very much. Any debate on this item? Seeing none, I will advance us to the voting queue. Council, please vote on screen. Okay, are we ready? And I'll ask the clerk to bring that up. That passes um, with unanimous consent and no one in opposition. Thanks, and just uh, a moment, Council, I always like to just double check. Checking is we're in a quasi judicial body with the clerk, but I am. Could I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I heard Councillor Hardwick seconded by Councillor Kirby Young. All in favor say yay. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Okay. Thank you very much and thanks to staff as well. Great work, Council. Thanks, 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 clerk. Have a long day. Good night, everybody. Have a good night, everyone. See you tomorrow.